All right, hi everybody. Welcome to lecture seven. We're gonna be talking about VGAs. Um, thanks for being here. You're welcome. All righty, so coming up this next week, we're gonna have our IEEE board info session. That's this Wednesday at from 7 to 8.30 p.m. That's where you get to learn about who all the officers are, what we do, how we like it, how we do it. Um, if you guys are interested in running for dab lead, you guys should come and ask us questions. We'll be giving us you guys some like secret little tips on what's gonna be on the interview and uh, you know how you guys could best prepare. You can also just ask us if you wanna run, so that'll work too, but come to the event, it'll be fun. Maybe there's like another position you like too. Um, I just wanna say like, it's really nice to be on board, to make a lot of friends, and like, you don't have to be scared of running for lead if you don't like fully understand material, because both of us, we learned a lot more just doing it this year, like a lot more, and um, it, it's honestly pretty fun. Like, you get to improve a lot of the labs, a lot of the specs you can make here on like these lectures, um, and yeah, it's just it's just a great time. So yeah, come out next week, and then so a little recap on the last lab. I think. I hope all of you enjoyed it. Um, didn't show up too much. Some of the things we learned is that having longer deadlines is way better. Um, so that's our bad, and we will keep that in mind. Uh, a lot of our labs coming up are gonna be spaced out just like this. Like the next one we do week one of spring. So if you have a lot of time to do that, you can just worry about finals first. Um, and another thing is to pay attention to the wiring diagrams. So for FFTs. There, once we get to like the four stage one, we're gonna have 16 inputs and outputs on each side, and it's gonna get really weird to look at them, but just make sure you focus up when you do it, otherwise it's gonna be really hard to find errors later. Um, and one clarification I had, so for some of the checkoff questions, a lot of people said that the FFT is um, faster, which is correct, but also less um, accurate than the DFT, which is incorrect. Um, the only problem we have is that in our implementation, we're only using 16 bits for each real and uh, imaginary component. So if we just use like um, a couple more bits, we could fix that issue. So it's not an FFT problem, like the algorithm itself is meant to work, it's used in industry, but um, our implementation just has a rounding error. Question? So we shifted the total factors by like 15 bits, right? So we just shifted them by 14 bits, which brought the little precision there. Could we have just made it like not have rounding errors? So we're shifting 15 because we want to, um, like when we pull out the correct value of the, the, the product, it's gonna be shifted down 15 bits. So we don't shift 15 initially, we can't like counter that. So I'm sure we could add like another offset later that would like do a shifting, but I think you would be losing like that whole magnitude of error there instead of just like a one off. Mm -hmm. right. um, yeah. Any other questions on the last lab? So, what's today's plan? Alrighty, today's plan is we're just gonna go through uh, the VGA protocol and how it works with our DE10 Max Lite. We're gonna try and go through this in about 30 minutes and then uh, give you guys a quick rundown of the lab seven. So, we're finally here, end of winter quarter. We're on VGA, we're gonna be looking at how to display stuff. So that's gonna be, like, it's gonna go straight into our VGA generator module here. And so, we've, got, we've already worked on the FFT processor last lab and we're gonna be working on the VGA generator now. So by the end of this lab, all you'll need left is the mic translator and you'll be able to do the whole dab. So yeah, end of winter quarter, let's go. Almost to finals week. Um, so what is VGA? Um, it actually is my roommate's initials. I'm, I'm just capping here. Uh, do you want tough jobs? What, did they just die? <laughs> nice. Is there even a way to change this without? <laughs> Guys. Is it gonna flip it without the oh my god. Did we just oh no no no, it's just the little crank. Oh stands for Video Graphics Array. Uh, it's an analog display standard. It uh, uses a 
the physical implementation is actually like an electron gun uh, that is a cathode ray gun. It goes and scans across your screen. It's really cool. And it goes row by row, left to right, and so it just goes by like at 25.2 megahertz or something like that. And um, each one of those 25.2 uh, megahertz is a pixel, and it just scans all the way back and forth. Um, it's easy to use because there's only a few signals. There's like the three each for the colors, and then like the two for your horizontal or vertical sync. Um, so that's like a lot simpler than HDMI, which is like way too many, uh, way way too many. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so this is what the uh, VGA looks like back in the olden days, where you'd have like that uh, old-fashioned CRT uh, uh, display monitor, um, like big Apple ones, right? Um, so you see that there's the deflection coils, which is essentially two sets of electromagnets that are each powered at different voltages that will essentially like manage where the location is on the on the screen. There's also this gun control, which is the, which essentially pulses the uh, cathode ray at a certain frequency, the 25.2 megahertz. Um, then there's your signals, the RGB signals, and your sync uh, signals, which is just to control where it should be returning back to the start uh, for your next row or for your next, uh, all the way to your display. All right, next slide, please. So, yeah, I'm on this one. Um, it goes down the rows, top to bottom, left to right, uh, signs the pixel its own color. Um, so your FPGA at every 25.2 megahertz is going to um, just output a new pixel, a new pixel value out of those um, three RGB values, so that's nine RGB in total. This requires short delays for the gun to reset because you have to be able to go past the screen and then turn off and then go to the start of the screen and then turn the ray back, back, ray back on and then go back across the screen. Um, so you can see in the next slide, I believe. Ah, uh, man. Well, okay. You just gave a great overview of how VGA works. All you really have to get from all this is that we're just scanning across the screen um, and there's just a few signals. So we're gonna break down what all those signals are and how fast we have to actually time the um, scan. Uh, so first, we talked about a few, just a few signals that are important in VGA. So these five are the five that we're gonna be worrying about. This uh, are the RGB, three RGB signals, V-Sync and H-Sync. So earlier in the slide, you might've seen that VGA is actually an analog display standard, which means that it uses analog um, like waveforms from negative 0.7, I believe, to 0.7 volts that um, basically tell you like the magnitude of each color, the intensity of each color in the RGB spectrum. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use a digital to analog converter on the FPGA, you can see this diagram. Um, it doesn't show the DAC, but it's like this, the resistor network is actually feeding into a digital analog converter that will convert our um, digital outputs from the FPGA to analog signals to be on, on the VGA cable itself. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use four bits to represent each of red, green, and blue and output them, so you'll have, so we'll talk about how much, how much like how many combinations there are later, but those are your three color signals. And then at the same time, you also need to output V-Sync and H-Sync, which are these sync pulses that I did for said before. When you get a sync pulse, that's when you know that you're gonna retrace from like either the right side of the, of the screen to the left, or from the bottom of the screen back up to the top right, top left. So just five signals, that's all we're worried about. Nice and simple, but with this, you get the whole functionality. So this is kind of like a timing diagram of how the pulsing works. So every every horizontal line you go across, you give the like RGB signals. Uh, you can see like the weird square wave things going on. Those are just kind of representing that you're sending different RGB pulses or like different data. So for each pixel, so it's a different color. Um, so as you're tracing across, basically each of these pulses is telling each pixel what color to be. So for the electron gun, we'll assign that color to your screen. Um, and then for a little bit, there's this thing called a front porch um, and back porch, which we'll, we'll cover later. But basically in that period, you need to zero out the gun voltage, 
where you do the retracing. So in the horizontal blank interval is when the gun actually moves back across the screen. And in that, and in that um, period, we don't want any voltage in the electron feed. Because if there is, that's going to draw like a random line across it. Um, so there, you want to zero out the voltage for a bit with the porches, and then sync back. And you do the same thing for V vertical. Um, and we'll cover how to send out these signals to the FPGA later. So firstly, breaking it down, we have the RGB signals. So here you can see that since there's four bits each for each channel, um, you can multiply those out to the four. Um, what, where's my superscript? Okay, anyway, that's just, I shouldn't say 24, I should say two to the four. The two to the four, 16 possibilities for every signal. Um, and that means 16 cubed, 4,096 possible pixel colors. So here you can kind of see like the intensity of each channel by itself, not combined. And then there you can see like some possible color combos of numbers we'll be sending out. Um, well, we'll only really be using each channel alone, but you can combine them to get um, more interesting colors. Uh, so yeah, this is where the graphic design comes in. You know, you, we definitely said that was part of DAB, this is where you can do it. Yeah. Uh, and then we have H-Sync and V-Sync. So horizontal sync, this slide is more just like your overall horizontal syncing um, diagram. So every horizontal line you go across, you first need your, uh, I believe you, well, okay, I guess you can think of it differently, but you can just say that after your last port, uh, back porch, you're gonna start sending data. So let's just start from there. So at the left, you can see the, at the dotted line, that's where you're starting to send data. So at every, um, it's like 0.04 microseconds, is if you divide like the 25 megahertz pick clock, every pixel is gonna get a data value. And so you send those data values across, so for every pixel in your active screen. And then you're gonna hit this thing called a front porch, which is like the small delay you need for the, the gun to zero out. So you get to zero voltage. And then you set this pulse, the horizontal sync, which is active low, so it activates when you set it to zero. It goes down to zero, and that's when the gun knows it's gonna go back to the left side of the screen. And then, and then after that, once the pulse goes back up, you still have a couple um, pixels where in the back porch, which you should still zero out the RGB, just like so it, it, it's kind of just like synchronizing it before it starts its next data display. Because if you went straight from this signal to um, to going high to like sending data immediately, it would be a little um, like you could if you just accidentally messed up the timing there. This kind of gives like a like a safe zone there. Um, and then V sync is the exact same. You have the same signals, but instead of H sync, you're calling it V sync, and this. As you kind of see, like each of these little things is like a horizontal line, and that's like the breakdown of it and the horizontal syncing. But then the vertical only happens at the end of each frame. So you draw out a whole frame, right? Like left to right, just like reading a book. You reach the end of the book and you flip the page. So that flipping the page kind of like the electron beam going back up to the top left. Um, and then now you need to do the same thing with a front porch, back porch, and vertical sync. So do you guys have any questions on this syncing? Because we, because this is something we have to control, the syncing. So then we have to talk about like how fast we're sending the signals out. All right. So, so what we really have to do with our VGA generator that we're gonna have you guys work on is we have to calculate the proper signal and then we have to send those signals uh, through the VGA cable. So that has to happen at uh, 25 megahertz. 25.2 is the standard, but 25 works just fine uh, it's less math for you guys to figure out and you don't have to do like paper math. Um, this means that we have to know how each pixel uh, moves all the way across the screen. We need to know its coordinates and I also need to know its color value as we're drawing it um, for each frame, uh, for each pixel, for each frame, and for each line as we're drawing it. If your signals mismatch, uh, you'll actually get like a red screen and it'll, uh, your little display will get mad at you. Um, this is where you'll just see like a bright red screen uh, for our specific VGA monitor, but uh, I know for other ones that I've worked with, you see blue screens. Um, yeah. Yeah, right. Now, I have a note on that. So Andrew just said that um, you have to know the coordinates of the pixel, right? So when he says that, what we're saying is that you as a designer, in your, when you're drawing, you should know what pixel you're at so you can assign a value. But you're not gonna be, but like the VGA itself is not gonna know what like what coordinate you're at. Because the VGA, all we're sending it is this H-Sync, V-Sync, and RGB pixels. So keep that in mind, 
we will know the coordinate and we'll assign the RGB value, but the electron beam is just gonna keep shooting across until it sees like our H-sync pulse and then go back. So it's like all that clocking of the gun itself is gonna happen on its own. We're just gonna be giving it data to like choose the correct colors. So the, the, uh, the thing goes across the screen at a speed of 25 megahertz? Yeah. Like that's one from like left to right, not the entire frame, or that is? Well, like the gun is gonna be shooting pixels all the time at 25 megahertz. So we'll talk about how like that fits into the front porch and stuff. Okay. But it's not just like, it's not just each line, it's like the entire thing is happening at 25 megahertz. Mm -hmm. We set some the proper signal so it knows like where it is currently. So like in the actual monitor, there is a clock and that clock pulses at 25 megahertz. Okay. And so as it pulses, you go pixel, 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 pixel on each pulse. Okay. And then you reach your, your porch, right. you reach your front and back porch, and then it, you turn off uh, your cathode ray, and right. then you go back to the viewer. Right. Okay. Pixel, 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 pixel. Okay. And in the porch, I think it actually like draws like more pixels off screen. Yeah, where that's what we're going to get to. Send it. Send it. Um, it just won't work. But what will the view do? Will it just like stay at the end or what? No, it will show you a red screen on our PGA and a PGA combo. It's actually like set error codes, I think, for, for the VGA protocol. So like you'll get different screen colors based on what your error is. Wait, no way. I'm pretty sure. That's what. That's what and told me last year, but Yo, that's it. like I got a red screen, but I remember someone else got a blue screen and it was like a slightly different error because mine was just my clock was too fast. I think the other person was like sending the wrong async pulses or something. So I think based on your error, it should give you different colors. But I was looking for a resource for this, which I'll continue to, but there's no like easy resource that just says what the error codes were. But they do exist. Um, any other questions? We're going to visualize like where all these pixels are right now. Never mind. Okay, so first, we've been talking about the clock a lot. 0.04 mils, microseconds per pixel, that's just the calculation. What's important here, though, is that our monitor is 640 by 40. So does that mean that we'll only be calculating stuff like these RGB values for that many pixels? Just 640 by 40. Is that all we have to worry about? This is my answer's right here. Do you think that it's enough to just like account for 640 by 40? Because uh, you can't the color anything you want. I know, but I'm saying like, is it fine to just compute the colors for that many pixels? Or like send out signals for that many pixels? Uh, pixels? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's Our 640 by 40 will be our active screen, but we also have to account for stuff outside of it, especially for like the ray tracing too, because those are gonna be also counted in pixels. So basically we're using pixels as like, our like kind of like our clock um, unit. Instead of just like seconds we're gonna, or microseconds, we're gonna use pixels as like counting, like how much time has passed kind of. So that's what we're tracking. What, what is up with, I did, I definitely did not animate that, okay. <laughs> 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 Anyway, so we have the front porch, back porch, async and vsync, right? That's where like the pixels go off the screen. And so we need to include those delays into our calculations. So you can see the calculations here. You're gonna have 640 active on a horizontal line, and then you're gonna have 160 that are for the syncing and porch. So you get 800 total uh, horizontal pixels. So when we send out signals, you're gonna have to send 800 each line. And then you're gonna do that 525 times. Because, well, yeah, you're gonna do that five, uh, every vertical, you gotta do the same calculation and it'll give you 525. This works a little differently though because the vertical porch does not happen um, 800 times, right? You only have to do a vertical porch after every frame. So you have to calculate that 525 just at the end of every frame, like the extra at the end of every frame, but you don't have to do it every, if you're scanning across and you have to do extra 800, all the way to 800 across, but then at the end, you have to add like 45 to give you the V-sync back to the top. That was a little, that was a little confusing. I'm sure to do that. Or is it fine? Okay. So you just do the V-sync basically once, as you saw in the earlier diagram. Um, 
Um, and then this is probably the most, this is like, I'd say this is the most important slide. This is literally basically all you need to look at for like computers. Um, you can kind of see where the 800 and 525 come from, labeled with the arrows. Um, and then the active drawing area is 640 by 480. So you kind of see here, like, so it's called the back porch because it happens at the end of a pulse, but you can also kind of think of it as the front of your frame um, for both the vertical and the horizontal. And a little clarification, like I said before, this vertical front porch doesn't just have, like you don't have to run across it to the left, right? You just have to reach the end of the frame and then like basically run down it, sink back, and it'll get to the top left. Um, so like, uh, you could think of this as a, uh, as time as well. So if you were to go through each pixel right here, it'd be your back porch from your previous clock, or from your previous line, you'd go across into your active pixels, then you're at your front porch for your current line. H-sync would go high or low, low. H-sync would go low. Your cathode ray would go all the way back here, and then it'd go to the back porch of that line that you were just at, and then, then it'd go to the next line all the way through, right? Um, it, I really, really suggest you guys do a simulation uh, of the VDA protocol once you get it rid. Uh, that'll make you guys much more able to understand the actual protocol when you see everything together. Um, it's really useful. Yeah, so that was just for like the regular running. And then do you wanna go through like, so when you reach like the bottom here, I'm pretty sure it should just, it, it's run down vertical. Right? Actually, I don't know. Huh. Because it doesn't add, I don't think it adds like this entire chunk of time, this no. entire square. I think it just goes like, hey, it'll go across the H sync, do the V sync. And that'll go to the back up to the left. Right. See, uh, this is not necessarily screen real estate, more as it's, uh, once it gets past the front porch right here, into this uh, section here, it'll actually just go all the way back up to the corner. So it's not, uh, you don't have to think of this as like entirely empty screen real estate. This is some screen, empty screen real estate and then the rest is changes in time. Is that correct? Yeah, like, I, like during the syncing, there's no drawing, um, but you're still, cal we're saying 800 pixels in that you're calculating, you're still sending out signals for 800, but like the syncing time will still just, it won't be separate, like you won't be drawing something there. Um, if that makes any sense. Yeah. yeah, so for the vertical front porch, is the cathode ray still going across the screen and then down on the H sync and then back, like, for that, or does yeah, it so just that's what so that is not happening. That's not happening. Like this is just drawn. I'm pretty sure this is just drawn to like make it look um, like look nicer. Like they just put like a little sliver here that's just vertical, a real vertical front torch would look kind of weird. Mm -hmm. But I don't. It does not scan like across like this mm -hmm. because like if you look at if you think of the actual distance across the screen, it's not going to need like that much time to go back there. Right? Right. There's also that also you feel like. Hella waste. Like you can just be like scanning across, doing nothing. Um, yeah, that's why. If you, I think the diagram for it is. Yeah, it's one more. So here, right? One more. Wait, isn't this? Isn't this it? Because like the vertical blending interval only happens once at the end of the frame. Oh, that's what you meant. Um, if you go to the slide four. Uh, one more. One more. Oh man. More? It's not the same. What? What is going on? This one more. No, before. Before. Oh, this one. Yeah. This one right here. So once you reach the end of your your line, right, you drop to the bottom and then go back to the top. Yeah. So I think the V syncing time is actually just slightly longer than H sync because like this distance is greater. Mm. But you don't have to do it like you're not going to be scanning across just for no reason. Did you also have a question? Sorry. Yeah. So I've got knocked out. I was still see you. All right, so I think this might be the, okay, so this, I think this is the last slide on how to actually do VGA. So does anyone have any questions on what kind of like signals we're sending out, what kind of timing we're doing? It should just make sense. You guys are all pretty smart. Um, it's also just, as I said before, it's just a grind. It's not like a conceptual thing. So let's get into, oh, I guess I did have questions, sorry. Yeah, this will be the most cursed meme I provide because of Kesha. <laughs> Look at the meme, enjoy it. Yeah. I'm leaving this up for. 
You guys can ask questions. Just look at the meme, man. Okay. Does the VGA screen have enough pixels to display the meme? <laughs> Depends on what resolution. I mean, the colors do look bad enough for it to. <laughs> yeah. Actually, no, I feel like the, the actual VGA things there would not show up very well. Are the little screens, are those 640 by 480? Or are we using the. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, our screens are using the same screen. I think it's an inch standard to use 640 by 480 at 60 hertz. Yeah. It does have a weird quirk though. You'll have to sometimes you can change the resolution from or like the scaling from four to three to sixteen to nine, or like vice versa. Mm, yeah. Because I remember they told us to use four to three last year, and then I switched mine to sixteen to nine and started working. I'm not. I actually don't know why. I don't know why either. Um, yeah. All right. Moving on. All right. So this is on the Jaffy Bird. Yes. So why do we want to do? So we're gonna make the Jaffy Bird. Um, this is one of my favorite project of the year. Um, we're gonna make a Flappy Bird knockoff, uh, courtesy of Brian, one of our past presidents. Um, go ahead and go on to the next slide. So the way this works is that we're gonna be splitting up everything into modules. Uh, we're gonna be providing you a skeleton for most of this, so you guys won't have to calculate the floor, bird, or pipes. Unless you want to, you can do it yourself. You could, you could also make it look a lot prettier. Um, so that's all going to be done for you, and that's going to calculate uh, the random positions of the pipes, the gravity for the bird, and the floor. Um, then we're going to have you guys make the VGA skeleton, which is what we just spent all this time learning about. And then the scoreboard is also going to be taking care of you guys. So you guys are going to have a little bit of stuff to do in the rendering code section right here, which is just going to be taping all this stuff together and making it ready to go out to the VGA monitor. Right? Um, I think you'll also have to do a little bit of the calculating this for. Um, but yeah, the main thing we want to do from this lecture is understand the VGA skeleton. Um, but yeah, this is like a kind of a basic diagram. There's some, there's some, uh, what's it called? Like ping ponging of data between this side and that side, because obviously you can't have a score without knowing like where your bird is or if it's past a pipe. Um, but this should, this should kind of give you an idea of how the overall code works. You can feel free to write the entire thing yourself if you want, but that will just take, um, we're just giving you like, the, the whole base game. You guys have an entire spring break, you know, you guys don't have to go to Cabo. <laughs> you could uh, stay in and enjoy You could still go to Cabo. Right there. Yeah. Um, yes, so that's the overall system diagram. And then deadline, so as you said, it'll be due Tuesday of week one. So you can turn in any time before then. Anyone who is complaining that it's not due week 10, just make it due week 10 in your head. Um, that works for us too. And you'll notice that once you finish it, you might have a screen tearing issue. So instead of giving you like a little um, like to-do that says like, here's where you can fix it, we're gonna let you fix it yourself if you want to. Because you want to, like, using what you just learned, you should be able to kind of figure out like what's causing the screen tearing. Um, kind of hint is that like your so we have like a separate physics clock and a VGA clock and the physics clock is assumed to be running like a thousand I believe it's supposed to be running a thousand times slower but the drawing like you have to be able to draw every frame um, before like the next physics the next calculation of where like the bird moved to or where the pipe moved so or where the sorry just where the pipe moved. so you just have to think about how to fix the pipe calculation so that it doesn't like run slightly faster than like, every frame is being uh, drawn. So that's, that's your hand. Does um, it have something to do with VSync, like the VSync we discussed here? I mean, it could, it could. Uh, it's up to you to figure out. Um, I actually fixed it in kind of a scuffed way in the, in the GIF above, but um, it does involve VSync. So the vertical syncing is the issue. Um, so that'll be up to you, to you to fix. It shouldn't actually be too bad once you get the whole thing running. But yeah, it's just due Tuesday week one. And if you get any errors, just if you get any screens that are just not working, it's probably your clock. So pay, pay attention to that. And also a cool improvement you can do where, I learned this yesterday actually, you can use an IP from uh, Cordis, you can just use a PLL to make your like to make your clocks instead of um, using a clock divider. A PLL is like a, 
It's like a control system feedback loop that basically can divide down clocks for you, and it'll be much more accurate than a clock divider, because you know a clock divider has like the like set of hold time problems with like a register, so that'll create excess delays um, when toggling. Whereas a PLL is like actually built silicon that'll like divide clocks for you. So if you don't look at that, you can do that too. Um, any questions? If not, I think we're, I think we're good to go. All right, that's lecture seven, everybody. Thanks for coming out. No, crazy. Um, if anyone has any ideas.